What's up guys and girls, welcome to Free Life Passion. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how physical preparedness and periodization may not be as important as you might think for a free diver and at which point it does start to become important. First I'd like to differentiate who I'm addressing this video to. So you can be a free diver and not care about how deep you go or how long you can hold your breath or how many lengths of a pool you can do. You can be a free diver and just enjoy exploring the reef, even some line diving, but not challenging yourself, not using it. Um, kind of like in the, in the way that you would use a sport. Okay, so keep doing what you're doing. You don't really need to pay attention to this video at all. The people that I'm talking to are the people who, who want to use free diving um, as a way to, to test themselves, as a way to start to go deeper. They want to explore free diving and see what it takes to get deeper and become a better free diver. This video is for you. So if the way you want to explore free diving is as a sport, as an athlete, then you need to train. And like any sport, your focus of your training needs to be the thing that's holding you back, your biggest weakness. So for instance, if you want to do any other sport, let's take grappling, for instance. If you want to learn to grapple, the first thing you have to do is learn to grapple, learn the skills, the different moves that you need in order to be a good grappler. There's no point in you focusing on increasing your VO2 max and thinking that's going to make a big difference to your grappling. The same applies to free diving. If you tend to turn early on, on your dives because of equalization, it doesn't make much sense for your, the majority of your training to be CO2 tolerance, for instance. You need to train the weakness, you need to train the thing which is stopping you from going deeper. And the vast majority of time in free diving, it's a skill that's holding you back. It's the ability to equalize, it's the ability to relax the body, it's the ability to be relaxed in the situation that you're in. It's the ability to maintain control, maintain focus while you're in this extreme situation. If you don't have these skills in place already, then it doesn't matter how fit and how strong you are. It doesn't matter how you tape it off and how fresh you feel before you do your dive. If you don't know how to relax, if you don't feel relaxed in the situation, if you can't maintain your focus, if you don't know how to equalize, all the training you did until that point was a waste of energy. You need to focus on the skill that's holding you back. So what I'm saying is in the beginning, freediving is a skill dominant sport and you can reach pretty nice numbers without any periodization, without really much serious physical preparation, apart from, you know, just being like generally fit and healthy without being like an athlete or being doing like extremely difficult stuff. If you just have like a general level of fitness, plus the skills, plus the relaxation and the strength of mind, 70 meters should be totally attainable and should feel like quite an easy dive. And that would be with like bifins, with um, free immersion, or with the monofin. If we're talking about no fins, it's a bit, it's a bit of a different story. 70 meters starts to become like a, a solid dive. So if you're watching this, if you tend to turn early on a dive, if your deep dives are kind of like hit and miss, if your PBs come out of luck, not because you decided to do the depth, but because you've tried to do the depth three, four, five times and then you finally get it, periodization doesn't make so much sense for you. You need to be focusing more on the skills. If on the other hand, when, whenever you decide to do a depth, you can get there, you've got the equalization, you've got the flexibility, you've got the strength of mind. That's when periodization starts to, to make more sense. Because you can go to whatever depth that you want to go. The next weakest link is going to be something like hypoxia or your stamina, your strength and conditioning. So to use the example of the people that I coach, the vast majority of my coaching is, is teaching skills. We spend a certain amount of time teaching skills and then we slowly start to increase the depth. As we increase the depth, we'll be doing less diving per session. But because these skills are all fresh 
and um, because they haven't had time to fully soak in that can take years until you don't need to think about how to equalize how to relax all these subtle and um, little things which you need to to do in your dive it doesn't make much sense in this situation for me to to taper so taper would mean you know, ideally, if you want to be as physically prepared as possible, you would only do, you know, one, two dives a week. That way, each dive you've fully recovered from the previous one. You're fresh, and you can do your you can do your maximum. But if skills are still what's holding my divers back, then there's no way that I'm only going to do one, two dives a week with these people. I'm going to do, you know, like four or five dives a week with these people. Um, but just focusing on very specific things and keeping the sessions as short as possible so they still have energy for the next dive session. Even leading up to a competition, if somebody is still struggling with something that's skill-based, we're going to keep diving until you know the, the day before the day before the competition. I'll still give them one day off, but we're going to keep practicing this skill because they don't need to be 100% physically prepared for the, for the dive the hypoxia is not the issue. The issue is skills, and the more you practice a skill, the more likely you are for it to, to work on the competition dive. Even if you look at the World Championships, even in the World Championships, which is the best of the best, the best from all around the world coming together to compete, you see a lot of people turning early. You'll see more people turning early than what you will see blacking out, for instance. So even in the World Championships, for most people, what's holding them back is skills. And then if we zoom out even further and we look at the freediving community, again, the thing that's holding most people back will be not being able to equalize, not being relaxed at depth. It's not blacking out. So for most people who are watching this video, you need to focus on the skills, you need to focus on the relaxation and not stress out too much about lifting weights and going for runs and expecting that to cross over into your free diving. So I hope that's clear. Um, a big part of my video is just trying to explain how free diving can feel because I know a lot of people haven't experienced what a dive can be, the full potential of relaxation, the full potential of control. And if you don't know how it can be, you don't know what you're missing. So really focus on skills, try and find yourself a good coach, a mentor, somebody who can really help to guide you in your free diving. And um, of course you can always contact me. I'm doing courses all over the world. So next year is looking cool. Hopefully Corona is not gonna be too much of a limiting factor, but in February I'll be teaching in the Maldives. So I'm doing some four week mentorships in the Maldives. In March, I'll be in Dahab. In May, I'll be in the Caribbean and then later in the year back in Dahab. So if you guys want some coaching, then head over to my website, send me an email or DM me um, and we can start to organize that. I hope the video was useful. Until next time, guys, take it easy and dive safe.